Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Vermont House Committee on Commerce and Economic Development. Um, we are here to look at an amendment uh, from the Senate on S-352. And so with us this morning is our legal counsel, Damian Leonard, who will uh, walk us through the, the amendment and we'll take and can take questions after that. So good morning, Damian. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. Looks very sunny down in Brattleboro, Representative Tolino. <laughs> Jealous of that. It is very nice it's out. It's nice here too. I think not, not quite as nice as that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here. And the amendment is uh, fairly straightforward in wording. Um, what this did is it struck Representative Till's floor amendment for resident physicians and dentists uh, and otherwise left, um, left S-352 as recommended by this committee um, and the Committee on Health and Human Services. Questions? Uh, Damien, um, this is just a, uh, it, the, uh, the previous language was earns in the present tense and the current version is earned in the past tense. Does that have any um, bearing on the actual legislation itself? Um, it uh, does. Uh, the reason that we've switched it to the past tense is because we were concerned about what they were earning during the eligible period, not what they're currently earning. We don't want someone to have gotten a raise from 2450 to 2525 to suddenly be disqualified. Um, so, and that, that was part of the group of changes that I uh, neglected to make at the end of the spring session. Um, uh, because we'd already moved past the, the eligible period there, even though the bill, when it was originally in, introduced, was in the middle of that eligible period. Um, so that, that is a drafter's error that's being corrected. Um, did, <clears throat> did the Senate get a fiscal note on Representative Till's amendment? Yeah, so the estimates for Representative Till's amendment is that it would cost about a half a million dollars. Uh, they didn't get an official fiscal note, but that was the estimate from Joyce and Chloe. Okay. Um, and then the uh, other piece that was added in the House, which was in uh, 353, was the, um, the unemployment insurance piece, uh, where we, the House took out the exclusion for individuals who'd received unemployment insurance. And the estimate that joint fiscal came up with that was one and a half million. Um, so the, the understanding that I have from the Senate discussion of this is that because of the budget implications for uh, Representative Till's amendment and the changes the House made in 353, um, they pushed Representative Till's amendment off to be dealt with along with the changes in 353 potentially in the big bill rather than in 353. Um, so it's not clear to me if the Senate is going to send back 353 um, or if they're going to move uh, that over to the big bill to just be settled with the rest of the budget. Um, the, uh, I, don't, I don't wanna go too deep into that unless the chair would like me to discuss what the Senate's been doing with 353 and then I'm happy to fill everyone in. But for, for the moment, that's where the representative till piece went. It's not that the Senate necessarily thinks it's a bad idea to give, uh, to make resident physicians and dentists eligible for hazard pay. It's that they wanted to deal with the, the funding issues um, altogether rather than um, piecemeal. Okay, thanks Damien. Yep. Charlie? Thank you, Zach. I asked my questions. Thank you, Zach. But uh, so in that paragraph that's underlined, the only change in that is 
be uh, earned and during the eligible period. Is that right? No, the other addition was, um, so the, the, it goes back to what passed House Commerce before the Till Amendment. So the two changes were um, from present to past tense. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, guys, my battery is about to die. Can I excuse myself for one minute to go get sure. the plug? Sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll be right back. Okay. It'll be fun to explain on the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mean why we supported Reverend M. Till's amendment and then potentially we'll support this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have, there's never a guarantee, but it sounds like the Senate wants to, and I, it makes sense is to move it into the budget so that all the money's there. The, the money's already been allocated for this piece, so that's over that and, and the 1.5 for the, if we, if they go along with removing anyone that was on UI, um, including them in hazard pay, then, um, then that's new money that they want to deal with in the budget I, by the sounds of it. Go ahead, Damien, if you're plugged in. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. I didn't no know it was getting so low and suddenly the Apparently little- you had a legendary performance with a coffee cup earlier too, so. Yeah, you've, you've seen, it's been a tough day here. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I spent um, a fair amount of time getting coffee stains out of stuff. Well, this so, so long as it wasn't on your computer. No, it hit my phone and uh, oh. a bunch of my wife's stuff. So almost as bad or- Yeah, yeah. it probably sounds like it could be worse. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, um, the other thing that's in there besides the tense change is the visiting nurses and contract nurses that work for home health and nursing homes are exempted from the $25 an hour cap which was something that this committee passed in its original amendment, so. Right, I, I just thought what was different from what we passed that the Senate sent back to us, why are we looking at that particular paragraph? It, it was the till language that was added on the floor. Oh, right, right, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so that, they, they stripped that out yeah, and okay. yeah. uh, they're leaving that to be dealt with um, to okay. get other budgetary questions in 353. Got it. I forgot that we had to include it in that paragraph as well. Got it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any uh, any more questions? Does everyone okay? Understand? Um, Want to take a make a motion to vote? Okay. So I'd entertain a motion. So moved and that we accept it. We, we, we accept the Senate's- uh, um, Concur with the Senate we, proposal we of concur. amendment. Hey, that's exactly what I was gonna say, Mr. Chair. It, words out of my mouth. Okay. So it's been moved by Representative O'Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. second. Take a pick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw I saw one light go on, but I didn't see the other. Second by uh, Representative Kimball to concur with the Senate proposal of amendment. Is there any further discussion? Okay, if not, the clerk can call the roll. Okay, Representative Bancroft. Yes. Representative Bach? Yes. Representative Carroll? Yes. Representative Dickinson? Yes. Representative Jerome? Yes. Representative Kimball? Yes. Representative Marcotte? Yes. Representative Morris? 
Yes. Representative O'Sullivan. Yes. Representative Tolino. Yes. And Representative Watson. Yes. Okay. 11-0-0. Charlie, you'll report that. Yeah. Try to back you up. Thank you. Damien, would you like to fill us in on what's happening with 353? I'd be happy to. So um, the question with 353 right now, um, there, there are two things. One is, um, so uh, as you probably know at this point, the Senate sent back its version of 353 combined with its version of 352 in the big bill. Obviously, we've just addressed 352 here, so that is going to move forward. So that leaves the issue of 353. Uh, the Senate's concerns center around um, the uh, Representative Till's amendment and then the expansion to individuals who'd received UI. Um, and the estimate there is the combined total for those two is $2 million that doesn't fall within the appropriated money at this point. Um, and so uh, their concern with the hazard pay piece is really, um, do we find that money or do we somehow trim those down to make it affordable? Um, so one of the questions uh, that joint fiscal uh, was asked to look at the other day um, was just if we trimmed it down to folks who had only received a shorter period of UI, such as one or two or three weeks of UI during that period, um, would the estimate for the cost with UI there come down significantly? I, I don't know the answers to that at this point. Um, I know Joyce has been looking into that and trying to figure out an estimate. Um, but that kind of the two, the two kind of main pieces and it really came down to the, the, the cost issue. Um, the other things going on in the bill, uh, as you'll remember, the UI pieces, um, the, your counterpart in the Senate, the Economic Development Committee, uh, appears to be leaning towards uh, not changing the uh, wage base or UI contribution rate next year, um, or at least not making the change at this point. So letting the wage base drop to 14,100 um, instead of keeping it the same and then addressing the tax rate issue next year if it needs to be addressed, um, but otherwise letting it go to schedule five. Um, they, like I said, they appear to be leaning that way based on their discussions, um, but they haven't taken a formal vote at this point. Um, the other things that are going on there, um, they've been looking at the issue of the, the penalty weeks issue uh, to um, try to determine if, if they want to do something different um, delay addressing that until later. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure they've come to a conclusion. Um, and then the committee seems to be just fine with clarifying the good cause reasons to refuse employment. Um, so that piece, uh, that piece doesn't seem to be controversial at all, but uh, this morning they spent a lot of time talking to the, um, the Department of Labor and yesterday as well about the taxable wage base, the tax schedules, and then this whole issue of, of the penalty weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure where they're gonna end up there, um, ultimately, because they, they just haven't taken a vote yet. Uh, they kind of left it as um, they're gonna return to the issue uh, at some point later after they finish up the spring's hearing on it, so. Okay. Any other things you're talking about that? Uh, with respect to that bill, um, no. So the, uh, I think 
the the takeaway here is that the hazard pay um, there's a potential disagreement over over the amount of money to be appropriated um, and whether the house additions can fit within the budgeted amount and then the there um, otherwise there are questions on the Senate side about whether it makes sense to make the house changes to wage base and, and tax schedules um, and whether uh, there may be a different way to address the penalty weeks issue or whether that should be uh, addressed now or, or held off on until next session. So, and yeah, like I said, it seems like they're leaning towards the opposite conclusion on the, on the taxes and wage base from the house. Okay. Uh, I don't have a clear sense on the penalty weeks issue of where the committee uh, seems to be going. Okay. Any Ooh. questions for Damien there? Yeah, um, if I may, so the Till Amendment, the objection to that was only about the money. It wasn't about the positions. The, the discussion in the committee um, was centered primarily on the money issue. Um, and so I think um, my impression of the committee discussion was that the main concern was uh, do the house changes fit within the appropriation that's already out there? Um, or are we going to have to find additional money? And if we do have to find additional money, um, should we just be rolling this into the big bill so it can be part of that negotiation? There wasn't, there were questions, but not really any sort of um, deep discussion about the positions that the house had added. Um, you know, so there, there were questions about, well, you know, what was added? Why did, why did the house add, for example, the private wastewater treatment facilities? Mm -hmm. Why were the, the resident physicians and dentists added? And there was um, just like this committee, there was discussion over the hours they work and the wages they receive and how that's reflected. Um, but there wasn't really a clear sense of, you know, these people should be in, these people should be out, or any real discussion about that. Um, at least not, not that I was privy to. So, thank you. Lynn? Yeah, thank you. Um, Damien, when you talk about the UI issue, um, we came down and trying to keep, keep it from schedule one to schedule three so as to not have a huge shock to the system. Mm -hmm. And we talked about keeping it at 16-1 instead of going to 14-1 so that we could still maintain that wage base even though we could lower it. It sounds like they did the exact opposite. They wanted to keep it at 14-1 and then go to schedule five. Is that what I understand? Yeah, so the, the Senate seems to be leaning or the Senate Committee on Economic Development seems to be leaning in favor of going to 14-1 because that will provide first quarter relief to employers, mm -hmm. increasing the amount of UI taxes due during the first quarter because that wage base is lower. Um, or at least if you don't, um, or decreasing the amount of UI taxes due in the really the first two quarters on the employee, but basically having that initial hit and then making a determination on tax rates later uh, when they have more information. Uh, one of the other things that committee discussed was whether if we're going to um, be decreasing or temporarily, temporarily lowering tax rates versus what they would be, um, by holding this to schedule three rather than letting it go to schedule five, should there be a concurrent um, boost in benefits for employees? Um, and obviously that has potentially significant fiscal implications for the fund. Um, so again, that was something that they discussed, but uh, there was also discussion about how by January, we're going to have a lot more information about 
how quickly the economy is rebounding, whether we've had a second spike in, in coronavirus, uh, et cetera, and where, where the fund is at. So um, their sense seems to be let the wage base go down and then wait and see on tax rate and, in, and any other potential changes. Okay, one of the things that I remember from 2009 and 10 with the quote unquote great bargain is that we went into the red and part of what we had to do, I mean, we have indexed the benefits to employees for years, years and years and years before that. And one of the things that stopped the indexing was that we went from the black into the red and we owed money to the federal government. And my understanding, and I know maybe Mike can help with this, my understanding was um, through most of 2010, if not into 2009, because we couldn't index it, you know, because you can't do that when you're in the when you owe the federal government money. We had to get back into the black again before we could index the benefit. So we're still in the black. We have what are they, 200 million or something? It's yeah. And the projection is maybe it go down to 90 million at the worst case. I mean, that's still all in the black. Those indexing benefits would remain. Um, it isn't until we we get into the we've used it all up and then we're we're um, and then we're owing money to the feds that we would have to stop that. And I don't know how we in you know we already are one of the highest states for employees as it is. Plus we index it. You know it's. So I don't know how they want to rate. I mean, I kind of also have the feeling that we had, my experience is that the House talks about things in more detail than the Senate committees do, because we, that's all we do is our one committee. And so I think maybe we understood it and understand it better than maybe they do. Um, you know, I mean, if you give with, you give with one hand, you take away with the other. I mean, if you're going to raise it to schedule five, you're going to still triple the rate on people and then the wage base will remain lower but that may raise you know a six of one half dozen of the other keep the higher wage base make it a little lower rate you know i don't know if they ever did any analysis financially on that or if labor did but it may come out of wash yeah they they did review the same um analysis from matt barowitz mm -hmm. um, that this committee saw um, and you're, you're right with, um, back with the grand bargain, we held the maximum weekly benefit at 425 a week until mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. was repaid. Then it indexed, um, according to the change in the state average weekly wage until we had mm -hmm. scheduled three, at which mm -hmm. point it increased to 57% of the state average weekly wage and it's since mm -hmm. been indexing from there. And it would continue indexing I think next, um, next July 1, it's set to rise, or maybe it rose this past July 1, the 531, and then it, it, mm -hmm. um, it yeah, so it, it indexed this past July 1. I don't know where it'll index next year. It may, may actually stay flat because the state average weekly wage uh, um, may not go up uh, with the way the economy is going. Um, so, what they were talking about was possibility of potentially some sort of temporary boost or something like that. Um, but there, some of the other things from the grand bargain, like the one week waiting period that has since gone away, mm -hmm. that wasn't discussed on the other side. Um, obviously, I, I can't comment on who spends more time deliberating. <laughs> information but um you know so there there was discussion of the grand bargain um the there were references to sort of the pain that both employers and employees felt um there wasn't necessarily talk though about um things like the waiting period there was more talk about if we're going to give a tax break to employers for a year should we give additional benefits to employees um, and I don't know that they settled on a conclusion for that. Um, I think one of the things that they did um, sort of acknowledge is there's a lot of unknowns going into next year. Um, and they're reluctant to take action uh, without having some of those unknowns addressed. Mm 
Damien, did they get testimony that if they jump to level, if they jump to schedule five and they did, they drop that wage down to 14,000, the only people they're helping are major manufacturers and larger employers and the smaller mom and pop employers are going to get creamed even with, with good experience ratings, because when you go to level five, the people who they're paying, you know, under 16, when they're all, all of, of most of their employees are within that wage range for the first part of the year. Um, so again, they, Matt Barowitz went over his handout with them. I'm not sure that they specifically discuss the makeup of the employers and the different bands and how the lower bands tend to be smaller employers that have few layoffs. Um, so the, yeah, I, I just, because of the way the week has been, I've been in and out of the committee. Yeah. So chunks of their discussion with uh, the Department of Labor on um, almost every day. So I don't know if they've gone into that specific issue. Mm. Okay. Any more questions for Damien? All right. Thank you, Damien. You're very welcome. Anything else? Okay, well, again, don't know if, um, I think while we're here and we still have time. So we, yesterday we had a discussion of, you know, creating a menu or a waterfall of where we'd like to see additional uh, CRF dollars go if, if they become available down the road. And I think the, the four places that we talked about was the trust fund, um, more into UI benefits, uh, recovery grants, and the voucher consumer stimulus program. So um, given that it looks like an uphill battle with the Senate on getting, um, getting the schedules changed uh, to give the employers a little, a little breathing room for a year, um, uh, I mean, I, I would say that the trust fund for me would be close to the top, if not the top. Um, so that, that I think even, <clears throat> even with us injecting some dollars in there, it's, it's still going to drive the, drive the schedule up to five, but it may, um, may not have to be up there as long as we, if we inject some money into it. Um, uh, what are people's thoughts? Lynn, your hand's still up, so do you want to? Oh, worry? that's from before, but yeah, I'll okay. say something. I, I think that I think that the plan we came up with, we went to schedule three and raise the base to 16.1 or keep it at 16.1 and we're not raising it, we're keeping it there. I think that is, um, I think that's, I would prefer to stay there. If we're going to have extra money, put it in the UI fund, you know, we may we may get fortunate and we may not have the kind of decline that um, that some of those numbers indicated. You know, we may have more like 150 million in it and and then can slowly build it back up, but with the numbers that Matt Barowitz gave us. But that's what I would prefer to do. Well, Bob? Yeah, no. Others? Me too. I'm with Lynn and Bob. So you're talking about putting it into the trust fund or into UI benefits? Trust fund? Trust fund. Trust fund. Okay, so think, the go ahead. Yeah, I think it may be one of the only opportunities we're gonna get to put a big chunk back into the trust fund, um, which would I think would significantly help. It may take a long time to add that kind of more money back in if we have a if we have a considerable amount of money by the middle of December. I agree. Yeah. Uh, well, I I mean I hope 
the Senate can support the work that we did, uh, first of all, because uh, I think we came up with a good plan, it was a good compromise. Um, and but if if they're not going to do that, then yeah, I would support going to the trust fund with secondary amounts going to UI benefits. If we have that pecking order, I would do trust fund first and UI benefits second, um, so that we can share the benefits of that additional funding with the workers in addition to the businesses. Well, in a way, it benefits workers too. If we if we fill the trust fund because if it goes, if the trust fund goes uh, belly up, um, we're looking at having to um, do some other other uh, things to the to the system, which would probably be, you know, putting a hold on the maximum weekly benefit indexing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, again, maybe instilling, installing a, a one week waiting period for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get that to get it out of the red. And so um, I think well, putting money into the trust fund benefits, not just the employers, but the employees as well. Well, what, I mean, how much, how much money does it even, you know, say we get 15 million that comes back. What is 15 million going to do? Well, you're, if, if we're not in, if we're going to, if we're, if the schedule is going to go to five, so that's, um, if I remember right, every two steps is 35 million or somewhere in that area. Mm -hmm. So that's, that means a $70 million, uh, less about 12 million, um, because the maximum weekly benefit, I mean, the, uh, um, the uh, taxable wage base going down 2000 would drop it to tw drop at 12,000. So you're around 58 million. So, if we were able to get another 15 million in there, you're, you know, that that's that's putting a, a pretty decent amount in for a year, and hopefully our, you know, either UI stabilizes, we we get people back to work again. Uh, hopefully, nothing else happens. But Linda, do you have another? Yes, thank you. I was just going to say that one of the concerns that I have about putting it into benefits, which sounds great, but you know, we everything you pay out in benefits, if you have to, you lower the the fund that much, and and you know, we were in the red, and it was a real slog to get through how you could go, and we had all kinds of things that we talked about and tried to work on. It was hard to get those changes. So but, I if think we, that yeah, but if we put the if we put money in uh, using um, CRF dollars um, that for, helps. for benefits, it would not go through the trust fund. So it that would be an, okay. an additional kind of like what that 17 million is now that's being proposed by the Senate. Um, it would not go through the trust fund. So it doesn't it won't deplete. The yeah. Trust. Yeah. It's over. And, you know, yeah, it's over and above. Oh, okay. Um, that, yeah, but that, that's yeah. that's that's an issue is that you don't want to go and and right. spend down the trust fund any more than you have to, right? Because we are still in a in a in the black and we still have money there. We have we have some wiggle room to work with, and if you can add it through some kind of mechanism through the taxable wage base or through the schedule, it would be better. It'd be better if it weren't three times the the rate, but. And the other thing is, is that, you know, the people who still are hurting, you know, those um, CRF award funds that we've been giving out to the businesses, you know, I don't know. I mean, they're slowly starting up and they've been expanded and we've done pretty well with this, but, you know, these, these wedding people, these lodgings, these restaurants, these breweries, all of these people are still, you know, they've gotten, I, I mean, I, I hope they've gotten a lot of money out there, but I, that would be my next place to put the money, whatever we have. Into, into the recovery grants? Yes, yes. Charlie? Yeah, I, I would agree with the UI trust fund. I don't know if we didn't make it available to ACCD until mid-November that they would have time to get money out to those businesses and have them spend it by the end of the year. That's my only concern with that. And then if we could I love the idea of putting in hands of consumers to spend at businesses that have been affected and have them do that. Although I'm not sure NIFT works really great that way, but 
I don't know. So this, the four is still there. I just don't know what's possible by the end of the year. And we got to do it with that in mind, I think. Sure. 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 Yeah. Bob? Yeah, I, I think we need to recognize that there are a lot of businesses that are in financial trouble, and they will probably be several of them that will be in financial trouble um, six, eight, nine months from now. And to hit them with a triple uh, increase in their taxes, uh, there's going to be a cost to employees. Either some that, that may be enough, along with other things, to put somebody out of business. But even if it doesn't, uh, with these businesses under stress, there's going to be no wage increases. There'll probably be some people laid off. So um, uh, there's going to be a cost to employees if we go to Schedule 5. Christy? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, ditto all the previous comments. Uh, I, I'm just perplexed that here we are in, in the past two uh, uh, grant allocations and the one that's coming up hopefully soon. We're giving money to businesses because of their uh, the stress and the economic injury that they've uh, been subjected to with COVID. And now we're going to turn around and try to rip it back through uh, the unemployment uh, trust fund repayment. And, and that to me just doesn't make sense. Our, our, the DOL wasn't in favor of that, that, that we went with their program. I thought we considered it and it was a great program. And I, I'm just, that it just does not make sense. I think we're going to look, here we are trying to help businesses and then we're going to turn around next year and we're going to just try to rip all this money back from them soon. And it just doesn't make sense to me. I think we're going to get a black eye out of it. Okay, so we, I think we definitely know the number one would be the trust fund. Um, I've heard some people say the UI benefits would be two. Others have said recovery grants, number two. Um, I think probably the rest of them going down the, down the line is gonna depend on, like Charlie said, whether where, um, at what point these dollars become available um, and then who can wind up getting them out quickly. That's, I think that's what it's gonna come down to. I think, I think we all could support any of those three um, yeah. as areas that, that we should fund. Um, so I, uh, I'm good with the trust fund and if you're good with um, allowing me to listen to what's going on out there after we're finished here and, and get the information of who can get the money out quickly and um, who's going to struggle getting it out. If you're comfortable with me doing that, um, I don't know that we need to rate the next three, but you tell me, Christy. Bye. Sorry, my hand's left over. Okay, Zach. Um, my, my only thought was, um, you know, I, I feel like so much of, depends on what the Senate does because if if the senate doesn't give the seven or if we don't we or, or whatever comes out of conference if we don't get the 17 million for the supplemental ui benefits that that would be my number one preference of where that money goes to and my understanding is that if if we don't give that if we do give it it comes at the expense of the business grants the recovery grants and if we don't then that money goes back to the recovery grants so um if if we lose money from the recovery grants then that would then i would want to put additional funds back towards the recovery grants to to get that level that we wanted to a, a, as a second tier level so, <laughs> i feel like it's kind of hard to and there's just too many balls in the air and i really and then you and then you just threw, mentioned too that it's really valuable is how can we get this money out there? I mean, what's the what's the platform that's actually going to get out there in the time? I mean, because we could we could optimistically want to put it towards, you know, NIFT or something like that, but they, we can't get it out, you know. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of stuff in the air. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, and you know that's information we don't have now, and and it's information we won't have until, you know, November time, when things do become available. We do know that. Putting money into the trust fund is pretty quick, pretty easy to do, and that we can do that. So, and if the committee is good with that, Stephanie. Yeah, I was just going to say that I think my my biggest concern is getting the money out there. But even after 
uh, some of those conversations we had yesterday, um, you know, that the business grants having to spend their money by the end of the year makes it a really tough, tough thing. And so if we're going to give more money, grants to businesses in December and they are having difficulty spending that, um, it, I don't know, it's, 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 a tr it's troublesome. So I, I, I think if you can figure out who can is prepared to get the money out there so that it can be spent in the, under the federal guidelines, that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Bob. Well, didn't we get testimony that um, they thought they'd be oversubscribed and that, uh, you know, they may have, I think the example they gave was that maybe everybody get 85%. So, um, and that's all based on that. I've had this loss. I'm a business. Yeah. I've had this loss. I've lost uh, $10,000. You only give me 8,500 and all of a sudden, if they get more money, I think it'd be pretty quick to put that 1500 back out. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it, uh, but it's all going to be having conversations with ACCD and, and others and um, to see how fast they could get money out um, in Department of Labor. So um, if everyone's comfortable with the scenario of trust fund number one and then play it by ear on the rest of them to see what the information, the data that comes back, um, if, when, and if money becomes available and we're asked uh, to weigh in and uh, if you're comfortable with that, then it's where the way will go. Everybody good? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Well, I don't think there's anything unless 353 happens to come back to us. Uh, we will, uh, I don't think we will be meeting again uh, unless something pops up like 352. So uh, good luck to everybody that has races. Uh, Thank you. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody back in January. I'm hoping that uh, that most of you, uh, I know Gene won't be with us and Zach, but I hope the rest of you will be uh, with the committee again. I'm hoping I'll be back with the committee again. I said it's always, everything is up to the speaker. So um, we will see, but I look forward to seeing everybody back in January, if not before. And uh, thank you for all your work um, during this biennium. And Linda, don't forget Linda. And Linda. Well, of course, Linda's, Linda is, she's leaving us too. We won't, uh, yeah. we, won't we won't see her again next year either. Right. Uh, not at least on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that the three of you that, that uh, won't be back. Um, I hope you 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 don't make strangers of yourself. I hope. Oh you, no. Um, if we're at the state house, I hope you always come and you come and visit because the door is always open for you, and we'd be glad to to see you and talk with you and and uh, get some of your uh, your wisdom also. And Mike, thank you. Yes, thank you. Good Mike. leader, great leader. What a wonderful committee this has been, and what a wonderful chair. I mean, really, it it. I've served on all of the commerce committees I've ever worked on. It just this is the best. And the two new members will be hopefully the two new members and the new appropriator, hopefully will be as good because it's a great committee and you do really brilliant work. And Tom, it's your great addition. I'm very happy with everyone. Uh, I think the speaker did a great job of putting this uh, putting this committee together, and uh, I trust that if she's back again, uh, like the rest of us, that she'll uh, once again put another committee together that that uh, that functions as well as this one did. So thank well, you. My track so, record hasn't been very good. <laughs> I'm sort of what you call a utility guy. <laughs> oh, we need somebody over there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> to say bob i've been on a, i think one more than you actually so <laughs> well maybe i if i get reelected, maybe i can tell you <laughs> well, I, know, I hope not but <laughs> oh no yeah you're a real asset there bob yeah no Absolutely. Tristan and i've already had one well, go around together moved on 
So yeah, well, everyone's been a, a great asset to the, to the commerce team. And I thank you for it. And Damien, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, really appreciate everything from our Ledge Council, from you and from David Hall. Um, we don't see Maria very much anymore, but even Maria Royal um, helps us from time to time. And of course, our uh, excellent uh, committee assistant, Amy. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, Amy's good. Thank you, Amy. Really good. Yeah, shepherding us through this you guys. pandemic has been great. Yes. Very good. Couldn't be any better. Hey, um, hey, you guys. I, uh, I just want to say thanks to all of you, and I, I hope that I'm lucky enough to uh, return. And as I've said before to you folks and to other legislators, and I said it at our picnic, you know, every 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 day serving in the legislature and our our, our committee has been like Christmas morning. And um, I didn't want to say it because it, I thought it would sound like treacle, but uh, the Chris, the presents under the tree have been all of you. I've learned so much from each and every one of you every day. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Just thank all, all you people that uh, have just completed your second year. Now you're, you, you won't be recognized as freshmen anymore. Right. Except, well, I think, Christy, you, you'll probably fall into that bucket, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have just been so experience, and I, re I really appreciate um, being on the committee. And, and Mike, you've been a great teacher. Thank you. Yeah, Mike has been good. I really, and I appreciate all the assistance that everyone on the committee has given me when I've asked my I think somewhat silly questions. <laughs> but it's, yep. been, um, it's been a great experience. Thanks. Yeah. Well, the good thing is we don't, uh, doesn't seem like we recognize political parties too much. Isn't that great? Yeah. We just recognize it's the needs of, of all Vermonters and, and we try to do our best to, to meet those needs uh, as much as we can. So thank you for all your work. Mike, I wanted to tell you, I've heard from a number of other committee members um, that uh, how much they respect you and, and um, that they think you're the best chair. And uh, I, you know, I echo that, but it's not just our committee. You have a reputation outside of uh, this committee that, that you're a, you're a sound policymaker and a good leader. So um, makes me, makes me proud to be on here and feel like I'm learning from the right guy. <laughs> and he voted for the cannabis bill. Yay, Mike. <laughs> I couldn't let you down, Gene. I know. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Uh, Amy, I think we can go on.